Alrighty then. Here we are, finishing the, the last part of the lecture for Chapter 7, looking at genetic mapping and physical mapping. Here we go. How do they correspond? And what I alluded to in class was being able to figure out how many double crossovers you'd expect, knowing something about single crossovers. And so that's what we're going to talk about here. So the order of the genes is almost always correct when you predict them in a physical map. But the actual distance, or even the relative distance, is not always similar. Because we take into consideration the double crossovers, but there's triples and others and lots of other stuff going on. We can only see 50% recombination in one of these crosses, and then rates of recombination is different across different chromosomes. In addition to all of these things that cause some inaccuracy, we also have this process called interference. Interference is when crossovers do not occur independently, and a crossover on one side reduces the likelihood that another crossover will occur. So that's called chromosomal interference. So we always have to take that into consideration when we're looking at uh, distances. In order to predict interference, we need to use the product rule. First, we need to try to figure out what we'd expect. How many double crossovers would we expect based on how many single crossovers that happened? Okay, And so a double crossover is really two single crossovers that happen together. Anytime we want to do probabilities that happen together, we need to multiply. So we multiply the probability of the single crossover, which you uh, determined in the in class, right? So if you go back and look at these numbers, right? This was 6.4 mu, uh, or something, and this was 12.3 mu. So recombination frequency in decimals, not in percents this time, the recombination frequency as a decimal, right, is used to calculate the probability of a double crossover, an expected double crossover. Okay, so the frequency of double crossovers should be the frequency of a single times the frequency of a single. And so if we looked at a total of 4,197 offspring, the frequency of double crossovers we'd expect, right, multiply by the total to figure out a number, would be 33 we would expect 33 double crossovers. But what we actually observed was only 22. So we know there was some interference happening. Something blocked some of the double crossovers from happening. Otherwise, we would have had 11 more double crossovers happening. We only had 22. Supposed to get 13. In order to measure interference, we need to use something called the coefficient of coincidence, the ratio between actual, the observed, double crossover, and the expected double crossover. The coefficient of coincidence, or the C of C, is observed over expected. Okay? DCOs. Right? Interference is calculated by 1 minus the COC. Okay, interference being capital I. So when we so when we do this calculation, we take interference is one minus the coefficient of coincidence. Here, the observed over the expected are observed over expected one minus that, or do the math, 0.333 if we want to present it present it as a percent. 33.3%. So what does this tell you? This tells you that a suggests that a crossover in one side, one of the single crossovers, physically inhibited a crossover in an adjacent side by 33.3%. Right? All they're saying is there's 33.3% less double crossovers than we'd expect with no interference. So if I said there's zero interference, we'd have what? we were supposed to have 33, okay? So, but we only ended up with 22. 
22 is 33% less than 33. And that's how you calculate interference. So now it's your turn. You're going to use the numbers we've already generated from our original uh, uploads, right, that we worked on in class or you did at home, and you are going to determine frequency of double of expected double crossovers, what is the COC, and what is interference. You're going to screenshot and upload each of these and get some points. And there you go. That's really what you're going to do. <laughs> okay, no, you're, you're actually going to do it. Okay, it's up to you.